On this episode of Acoustic Tuesday, we're gonna have a look at an organization that's using the healing power of music. We're gonna listen to an album that is quite literally on fire with acoustic goodness, and we're gonna look at not one, but two pre-war guitars. All that and more right after this. The Acoustic Tuesday show is brought to you by Tony'sAcousticChallenge.com. Boo. It's the Halloween episode of Acoustic Tuesday. <laughs> the hauntingly <laughs> horrific Halloween episode of Acoustic Tuesday. And we're in double digits. This is Acoustic Tuesday number 10. I'm super pumped. And I'm pumped as well that I'm joined by Sir Noah Jacob Heckman Jr. the first and Levi Aquila, the man with the technical plan. Hey, Levi. Hello, gentlemen. It's hey, very Tony. good to see Tony, both Tony. of you this morning. I see that you have um, dressed up as some terrifying creatures. <laughs> Nothing. No comment. I got no. nothing. I got nothing. I didn't, Halloween. Sorry, that wasn't that wasn't a Hall that wasn't meant to be a dig. Halloween is today, Noah. Wow. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. I, yeah. I remember now. Right. Good. Good job, guys. The two uh, the two fellows with kids. I know. That uh, just means I know where I'll be tonight. My son has yeah. been um, changing his Halloween costume all the way up until the last minute, so I can't wait to see what he'll be. Um, so I've got a bunch of stuff to dive into today. As usual on Acoustic Tuesday, I'm going to be diving into my list of five Guitar Geek items of the week, but I've got two items of business that we have to deal with right away. First, let me get the personal item of business out of the way. Gentlemen, Tonight is my first adult league hockey game, and I'm very excited. Congratulations. Um, awesome. Well, don't congratulate me yet. I have yet to play, um, but I'm excited. I'm playing for a team called the Fatties. I'm playing goalie. I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited for this opportunity. Uh, so I'll, of course, update you on what happens this evening in later episodes of Acoustic Tuesday. Now for the item that's, that's truly of business, uh, your trivia question for the day, your Guitar Geek trivia. Your question is as follows. Which of the following Martin models was introduced first? Was it the 0018, the D28, the OM28, or the D35? One more time. Which of the following Martin models was introduced first? Was it the 0018, the D28, the OM28, or the D35? Why don't you go ahead and ponder that? while I dive into my guitar geek item list for the week, starting with item number five, the Santa Cruz Brad Paisley signature model. Now, Santa Cruz sent me this guitar to review, and I wanna thank Carolyn over at Santa Cruz because she's always been a treat to work with. She's a Cubs fan. That's a sore subject right now. Let's just not talk about that. But she's just a treat to work with, and um, I love that she's helping us out and getting us guitars to review. And the first one she sent me was the Santa Cruz Brad Paisley model. Now, this model is based on their pre-war dreadnought, and I gotta be honest, I'm always a little bit hesitant with signature models. Um, I did, it's just a thing. I can't even explain why. I just am. But this model exceeded all of my expectations. It blew them right out of the water. This is, again, based on their pre-war dreadnought model. And it it is gorgeous to look at. It's done in such a classy way that the headstock inlay, the, the fingerboard inlay, the top used on the guitar is stunning. And actually, even the case, and I have the case right here with me, and that is a, literally a Paisley case. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous, and the tone of this guitar is so well composed. In fact, I have a clip of the review that I did to share with you. We'll have a look at that right now. Not the figuring, and it's absolutely stunning, as you can see. Bridge is ebony with a bone set. All right, so that was the Brad Paisley model by Santa Cruz. Now, I want you to check out the full review. There's a link to that below um, where I discuss the story on how the model was developed with Richard Hoover, Bill and Ellie at Artisan Guitars down in Nashville, and of course, Santa Cruz Guitar Company. Uh, so please check that out. But one, th one thing of special note on that guitar that I didn't discuss in the review that I want to discuss with you right now are the strings used on the guitar. Santa Cruz is using their own strings. Now, these strings are not based on gauge, they're based on tension. They're called the parabolic tension strings by Santa Cruz, and they have both a low tension set and a mid tension set. And according to their website, they're using the low tension sets on the smaller body guitars and the mid tension sets on 
the larger body guitars. Now, upon playing the Brad Paisley model, I was really uh, enjoying the feel of the guitar, uh, namely the tension in the strings and just kind of the responsiveness. So I immediately contacted Carolyn at Santa Cruz and I said, hey, I'd love to try these strings on some guitars that I have here. So she sent me some sets. I'm gonna try the low tension set on my 1935 single 017. And I'm gonna try the mid tension set on my Martin HD 35. And of course I'll report on that uh, in a future episode of Acoustic Tuesday. I wanna give you guys the full scoop and I really wanna put the strings through their paces before I do that. Now, a quick note on this. You're probably thinking, well, gosh, you know, strings come in gauges, that's how I tell them apart. Well, again, these are tension based. The gauges are the same. And how they do this is they adjust the size of the core wire and the wrap wire to achieve different tensions, but retaining the same string gauge. It's a really cool concept and I can't wait to divulge all the nitty gritty details. On to acoustic guitar item number four. This one is one that can quite possibly change your musical life and certainly direct your guitar journey to the pinnacle of Enjoyment Mountain, which is a real mountain that I just made up. I like that. <laughs> I wanted you to be aware that the Fretboard Wizard five-week interactive course is open for enrollment right now and actually open until November 2nd. Now, Fretboard Wizard is a course that really... Uh, teaches you to apply music theory, but not all of it. I take 20% of all that is music theory, this distilled, uh, this distilled version of music theory, I hand it to you and encourage you to apply it um, to your guitar playing. This is, this is a course that uh, is, is really truly so much fun. Um, essentially how it works is you learn the concept when the lesson module is released and the modules are released weekly. You go ahead and confirm your understanding of that concept by taking a, a retention quiz, and then you actually apply that concept by participating in the optional challenges. Now, I say that these challenges are optional, but I strongly encourage them because that's when the lesson really cements uh, in your head. And again, I just want you to be aware of this course. It's, it's, it's a truly life-changing course. Uh, I've, this is the second iteration of the course. Again, it's run live. And the the feedback I've been getting is is truly unbelievable. In fact, we have a um, a student that I'd like you to hear from right now, Jim J. It's actually not just him. It's it's him and his bird who knows how to hold a guitar pick. So let's hear from Jim J. His thoughts on the fretboard wizard course. Hi, this is Jim J. from Blairsville, Georgia, and my assistant Shecky Greenberg. We took the fretboard wizard course earlier this year, and I wanted to say a few words about it. If you're on the fence, this thing is insightful. It's enlightening. Uh, it will teach you what you need to know about music theory for the guitar. Just exactly the right amount. Tony has distilled what he knows about music theory into what you need to know to play the guitar. What you need to know to hear a song, find out what key it's in, transpose the key into something that makes it easier for you to play or sing, uh, help you write songs, help you understand the relationship between the notes. Uh, it's just fantastic. It's something we look forward to every day. It was, uh, it was fun, it was easy. And at the end of it, I felt like I learned so much. I felt like a totally different guitar player. Uh, even sent a song in for a review. It was fantastic. It's the best value out there. And uh, it's taught by one of the best teachers out there. Uh, I can't say enough about him. Guy just makes uh, learning a lot of fun and you will learn. So give it a try. Fretboard Wizard uh, will be for you, and you'll find out as soon as you, as you start. All right, so there you have it. Jim J and his bird, who I forgot the name. I know Green is involved. Uh, Shaker Green? Shecker Green? Chubby Checker? I don't know, I don't know. But I appreciate Jim uh, sending in that video. And um, Levi was uh, out of excitement for Fretboard Wizard doing the chicken dance uh, behind his, his uh, computer station. That's not there, true. Which I, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> which is really funny. Um, so again, I just want to reiterate, uh, the Fretboard Wizard five-week interactive course is currently open. Enrollment is open, and it will be until November 2nd. But here's the cool thing. If, if you're catching this episode after November 2nd, you can still check it out. There's going to be a link uh, below where you can learn more about the program and actually sign up for the waiting list and be notified when it goes live next time. So be sure to check that out if that's something that interests you and resonates with you. Now, on to item number three. I've got, I've got some stuff ahead. I still have to talk about another pre-war guitar. 
I still have to talk about this organization that truly means a lot to me. And um, I've got a quiz for you, but, but let's focus on uh, acoustic guitar geek item number three, which is what I'm listening to this week. And I, I should say what Noah and I and Levi are listening to this week, because I have played it um, pretty much every day. I started and, playing it at home. You, <laughs> and and you're, I'm sure you're wondering what the album is. It's called Love Letter for Fire. It's by Sam Beam and Jessica Hoop. Now, you may not have heard these names before, but let, let me divulge a little bit. Sam Beam is mostly associated with his project Iron and Wine. Jessica Hoop is new to me. I'd never heard of her before, but her, uh, her newest solo album is, is, is stunning as well. And these two combined to make this album, I believe it was released in April, uh, and it's it's just it's lush with harmony um, their voices are both unique in their own right but blended together are, are just I mean we talk I'm talking jaw-droppingly beautiful um, the, the album is is outstanding front to back uh, the songwriting and song structure is a little bit um, not of the usual form we were kind of talking about that earlier this week and uh, I just think it's it's a, it's a, an album you will definitely enjoy. The instrumentation is gorgeous. It's subtle. It's it's just it's layered. I, it's beautiful. I want you to listen to it. Is basically the what what I'm saying here. In fact, I've got a small clip from um, the tune "Sailor to Siren," which is one of my favorites off the album. We'll go ahead and listen to that right now. Blossoms ready to explode, rooted in the cracks along the road. The world is a dream that we're going free. Wow. All right, so that was just a quick, quick uh, introduction to the album "Love Letter for Fire" by Sam Beam and Jessica Hoop strongly strongly encourage that uh, you to purchase that album um it's it's a perfect album for the fall time i think i, I don't know if that's accurate you know i was just thinking how uh, i was thinking it has a visceral magic <laughs> thank you no that actually that he's he's pinging at one of my um acoustic guitar geek items that still remains on the list i've got two of them for you one of them that if you're a guitar geek you need to be aware of uh, but first, I want to celebrate, Noah. I want to dance in the streets. I want to wave some flags. So let's uh, let's celebrate some small wins. Jacob says, I'm 17 and I've been playing guitar for seven years now. I was recently given the chance to travel to the other side of New Zealand and make my first acoustic guitar myself. With with assistance, of course. I'm really happy with it, and it is my new performance guitar. Um, cheers from New Zealand. That's outstanding. That is so cool. Uh, to, to be playing... Uh, oh man, kudos. Let us... Please post pictures or send pictures. That, that's outstanding. Uh, Christopher, uh, I was playing at my colleague's pub almost all day. It was more like practicing with uh, checking my boundaries, uh, trying to find new songs to play and sing. One couple uh, came in to get some food and drink, and they sat down you know, at one of the tables. A few hours la later, they left, and he found out that they paid for his meal or for a meal for him for playing. That's outstanding. Yeah. Cool. So that's that a sounds, small win. I, that said like something I want to do. He, with, says he's never, he's, he said he's never played for money before, so it, it, was, it, it meant something to him. A killer double win there. You got, I mean, you got paid, but most importantly, you played around other people, and they, they dug it. That's awesome. I want to go do that now. All right, Scott, uh, here's our last small win of the day. Uh, Scott says, I've only been playing guitar for three years, but I already own five guitars. He says, my win is that my wife has gone from saying I don't need another guitar to just rolling her eyes and walking away when I talk about getting another. <laughs> <laughs> that indeed is, is an incredible win. That's outstanding. And there you go. That, thank you, Noah. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And uh, thank you, of course, for, for sending in your small wins. Of course, and if you want to get your small win featured on an episode of Acoustic Tuesday, please leave a comment. 
but start that comment off with hashtag small win and then go ahead and type your small win in. It could be something like your wife no longer objects to new guitars coming in the house. Could be a concert you saw, maybe a new instrument you got, maybe you changed your strings, whatever the case may be, please share it with us and all your fellow guitar geeks. Um, we love celebrating small wins. It's, it's, it's truly a, um, it's the dose of positivity that I need for my week. It really is. So it's thanks. necessary. Thank That's why we share our, our small wins together. That is, that is an accurate statement, No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dive right back into the acoustic guitar geek list, and that brings me to item number two. I'm talking about the pre-war guitar company. Yes, just, just hear me out for a second. New, newly made pre-war guitars. Newly made pre-war guitars. This is a shop that is making guitars inspired by guitars from the golden age. And rather than me try and describe it, I'm gonna actually let the luthiers do that. I've found this killer um, kind of mini documentary on this company that uh, you need to see. So let's have a look at pre-war guitar company. Anybody who makes fretted instruments are looking for the sound of the golden age of, of instruments, and that's really what these things are. This is what everything is measured to. The, the window of guitars that we're inspired by is a very narrow window. It's guitars that were built from 1934 to 1941. A guitar that was built in 1937 structurally is very different from a guitar that was built in 1944. They're loud, they're very present, they have a robust tone, and that little window of guitars and the way that they were constructed, there's magic in there. I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to almost conjure that. We've had a couple of really superb instruments in, and the opportunity to get a 3060 28 that's sitting there in pieces, that doesn't come along every day, and when it does, I mean, that's what made us say, hey, wait, we gotta really figure out what's going on here. Recently we've had things apart that we've 3D scanned, that we're getting exactly what physically these things were and are. Nobody really has had the opportunity to have these instruments apart to this level. And come to find out that everything that we had ever done and most ever, anyone else had ever done through a mirror, through the sound hole, was wrong. People who own pre-war real authentic guitars from the 1930s that are worth more than a house, they take them on the road and they might need an adjustment or whatever. They don't have truss rods or, you know, they're just finicky. They're like an old, an old car that you have to keep fixing. Uh, so, in the spirit of fixing that problem, we make a new guitar that doesn't have those problems that you can actually adjust and it's more user-friendly and playable. You know, it's something you want to pick up and play because you're not afraid you're going to hurt it. The idea is to take this, like, visceral magic that vintage guitars have and conjure that in an instrument that you can actually just go buy. There's, there's a balance between the precision of them and the artistry, and I think that we've, we've figured out a lot of where, you know, the sound of that comes out. The technology helps you get to the spirit, uh, but you can't use technology to recreate it. You have to, you have to build it like they did, and you have to use technology <laughs> to bring it back to, the, to that sound. All right. Was that a sign for me to go? Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, thanks, Levi. <laughs> I couldn't tell if, if Levi was actually celebrating, giving me an air high five, or if that yeah, was, maybe I was, was just stretching. <laughs> the, the yeah, it was sign for it, me to go. It was a different. It kind of went sign. up very hesitantly. It, well, you, but, I've been like pulling shoulder muscles when yeah. I do it, so I'm trying to like go a little more chill. Well, I certainly don't want you to injure yourself, so I, I, I got <laughs> a you. mental note. Uh, <laughs> so that's uh, so so that's that's a company that I want guitar geeks one and all to be aware of. Um, I've seen Molly Tuttle play their instruments, Billy Strings. I've also seen the, the fellow from Mandolin Orange, and his name is escaping me right now. Also, there was a, a video that I found of, of Tommy Manuel playing uh, one of their instruments at, at a shop down in Nashville, uh, and he liked it so much he actually purchased it, uh, which, which brings me to um, me divulging a little bit of um, my internal thinking here. I'm, I'm real close to ordering one of those. I'm real close. I haven't, I haven't gone there yet but I'm real close. So I'll, of course, keep you posted on that. Now, this, this is the point of the Acoustic Tuesday show where Noah and I usually play darts. Correct. But we, ju <laughs> <laughs> but we just concluded our second dart battle. We did. The bourbon versus scotch battle, which, Noah, how does that work? Well, it was, it was a 
viscerally magical experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Another one. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it ended uh, with the final score of me, 67, mm-hmm. and you, 11. Yeah. It was a good I battle. Was, it was a proud 11 that I put up on the board. <coughs> Excuse you me. You right The coffee there? really just right? got me. It just hit me in the right spot. Losing can be um, hard. Now, since I lost the dart battle, uh, losing is hard, Noah. Um, I, of course, have to purchase a bottle of scotch for Noah and I to uh, enjoy together. And I did make that purchase. And I want to take you shopping with me. So let's have a look at uh, not only my shopping experience, but our tasting at the barrel. So this is a little difficult because bourbons come just in their bottle, but every scotch I see comes in a box or a tube of sorts. Now, I really like skulls and crows and things of that nature, so there's two that have skulls and crows. But there's also this other one that I can't even pronounce. I know Noah's a single malt guy, so at least I have that to direct me. Now, I just have to figure out what to pick. All right, I've made my decision. All right, you have a great day. Okay, Noah, it's either the crow, the skull, or the mystery bottle. Okay, please taste, and I will. I'm gonna go with the crow. Well, I think you'll be happy to know that you're wrong. Always it's happy to know the I'm wrong. Uh, unpronounceable Ashento Shan 12 year single malt. I hope I did that pronunciation justice. So, congratulations, Noah. Hopefully, this scotch is as good as your victory was. Well, thank you, Tony. I'm gonna sit with this a little longer and I- I'm liking it. But good. I tell you, victory always tastes good. All right, so that was the result of the second dart battle. I appreciate you uh, looking at that and checking that out. And, you know, scotch is scotch. So we'll just leave it at that. It was good. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, it was, yeah, it was nice. It was neat. Uh, So I want to know what you're thinking about the Acoustic Tuesday show so far. Did you make a new discovery? Do you have a discovery to share? Please leave a comment below. I love reading the comments. We have such a cool, supportive community here. I I can't get enough of it. In fact, most of my day is spent just surfing through comments on Acoustic Tuesday shows because I just, I learn a bunch of stuff and I know that that, uh, guitar geeks across the world will as well. So please leave a comment below. And speaking of comments, Noah, You've got some shout-outs and some some featured comments from last episode. Yes, I do. Uh, a couple shout-outs to folks who popped in in last episode, to Jeff, Chuck, uh, Howard, Dave, Miami Stop, Odd Dollar, mm. Loxley, Cal, and Alyssa. Awesome. And now for a couple comments from that last week's episode. Now, it was interesting. I have to say, I... There's so many comments about how awesome Scotch is. Mm. It's amazing. So I, I dug real deep to, so that I didn't have to make all of them about Scotch. But Zappa Blues had to say, is Noah a single malt Scotch or blended Scotch guy? And since everybody's wondering, I just thought I would let everybody know <laughs> that, that although I can certainly appreciate the blended, I do prefer a single malt Scotch. So if you're sending... All right, Pete... <laughs> So Pete has to say, uh, love Acoustic Tuesdays, recently bought a Performance 2 G7 Capo, which is cool. Uh, Still love all the info you give. He says, I can't wait to get this cast off my left hand since surgery and start playing again. He's going through some guitar withdrawals. Mm. Uh, Keith. Best wishes from TAC headquarters, by the way. Just want to throw those out there. For that matter, anybody who's in a cast right now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Keith has to say, lovely show, and got to get some of that coffee. Because mm, we've flat been drinking. Yes, fuel. flat picker's fuel. And Tim says, uh, I'm loving the show. I'm 48, and I've only played by ear, but this theory to guitar is already helping me, and it's only been a week. Thanks so much. Oh, killer. Awesome job. That, that's great. Well, thank, thank you for everybody uh, that has left comments. Uh, again, I, I really appreciate it. We love reading them. And of course, uh, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think of the show uh, below. And if there's something that we just need to know, some discovery that we need to announce to the Guitar Geek world, please leave that as well. Now, I have your trivia answer coming, but 
just want to take a second and get really serious here on Acoustic Tuesday. Uh, in fact, item number one is a very serious item. And this is something that I want guitar geeks to be aware of because we all know we've all been in touch with that healing power of music. And there's an organization out there that is using the healing power of music in, in just an amazing way. The organization is called Guitars for Vets, created by Patrick Nettesheim and Dan Van Buskirk. Hopefully I said those names uh, correct. Uh, they've, they've used uh, this, this organization, well, I can't really explain it as good as they can. So let me first read a quote from their website and then I'm gonna actually introduce you to both Patrick and Dan. Uh, so here's the quote. Thousands of our war veterans are afflicted with post-traumatic stress disorder. In fact, more soldiers have committed suicide since the Vietnam War than have died in actual battle. But many are finding hope in an unlikely place, behind the wood and strings of an acoustic guitar. The healing power of music helps soldiers cope. That's why we provide veterans with guitars and a forum to learn how to play. But we can't do it without your help. Please read on to learn more about the program and how you can help those who served rediscover their joy through the power of music. Now, without further ado, I present to you both Patrick and Dan from Guitars for Vets. Please take a, take a listen to their message. Evening, she's a singer with the band. Right now, Guitars for Vets operates 60 chapters in 30 states. We've given away over 2,000 new guitars. We have over 200 volunteers nationwide, and I can't even count the amount of volunteer hours. I'm Patrick Nettesheim. And I'm Dan Van Busker. I knew I wanted to be a musician and a guitar player you know, probably back when I was four or five years old. And at that time, I also thought I wanted to help heal people. I met Dan in 2006. Something just told me that I should get a guitar and not worry about how well I do, but just get started. <laughs> Good. <laughs> when Dan showed up to his first lesson, he told me that he was suffering from PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> we just hit it off right away, and the, the lessons were really meaningful because we were like a couple of brothers coming together. Hey, keep going with that. I'm going to switch chords up a little bit. And we could just share so much with each other. I was not in the military. I didn't know a lot about Vietnam. And Dan opened up and he shared with me. I wanted to join the Peace Corps, but my dad asked me to serve my country. When I came back from Vietnam, after spending a year of being chased by enemy reconnaissance teams, North Vietnamese, Viet Cong, I saw a man as a predator. In civilian life, it only takes one traumatic event to create PTSD. In combat, a combat soldier might go through that several times a day or several times a week, so you can imagine the urgency that I feel in helping combat Marines or combat soldiers. And when you put this guitar in the hands of somebody that is sinking deeply into depression, it opens up a window of serenity for them, enough that they can understand that they are capable of feeling good again. I think I knew we were on to something from how it helped me to be with Pat and play the guitar. You just go on and on with it. When Patrick and I were taking lessons, I enjoyed it so much I suggested that we go to the VA and reach out to the other vets. So we did that to play for men and women in spinal rehab, to perform for them. And that's how we got started. We, we took the guitar through the units. We'd put the guitar around them and just reach around and play it while it resonated in the center of their being. Guitars for Vets is based on the notion of 
guitars, music, camaraderie, and helps veterans find some joy in their journey towards recovery. It's an extension of the good things I learned in the Marine Corps. It's an extension of I got your back kind of love. Fifth string A. The way the Guitars for Vets program works is veterans are referred to us by their caseworkers in the VA medical centers. Play A. After the 10th lesson, they graduate. They're given a brand new guitar. Here's our slogan here the healing power of music in the hands of heroes. So what a deal. They get to start their music with an instrument they worked for, and they're learning how to play, and it can be with them the rest of their life. After that graduation, they're encouraged to return to group lessons or group jams, so we can continue to build that teamwork and camaraderie they're not getting diagnosed. They're not having to retell their story over and over again. It's a group of veterans sitting together, playing together, making music together. Thank you, gentlemen. Really appreciate we it. want to give these new guys more green lights than we had when we came home. We want to help them. We want to mentor them. We want to make their life better. We're taking them here and we're saying, you're wonderful. We love you just the way you are. Let's go with this. Let's rock and roll and have some fun. All right, as guitar geeks, and I'm talking about all of us here, the collective guitar geek world, uh, just I think this is an organization that you need to be aware of. And I would encourage you to click the link in the description. If this is a message that resonates with you, if you want to help them with their mission, uh, you can do so by donating on their site, or you can just spread the word. Uh, share share the story, share the site with your fellow guitar geeks. I really would love for, for everybody to be aware of this organization and the really, truly good work that they're doing uh, with music and guitars. I think it's extremely, extremely important. So that, with that item, that concludes our Guitar Geek list for this week, this Halloween week, the double digit, episode 10, Acoustic Tuesday, episode 10. 10! I'm just, I'm stunned. It's been 10 Feels episodes good. already. Feels good. But you're Feels probably, good. You, you're probably wondering, and I'm sure Leah, uh, Leah, I just combined, <laughs> I just combined both Noah and Levi. So as the collective, Leah, I mean Noah and Levi, I'm sure you guys are wondering uh, which, which of the following Martin models was introduced first. Was it the 0018? Was it the D28? Was it the OM28? Or was it the D35? Well, I'm here to say that if you answered that the D35 was introduced first, you are unfortunately wrong. It was the 0018, and I've got some further factoids for you. The 0018 was introduced in 1898, with four total models being made that year. The D28 was introduced in 1931, with just one single 12 fret model being introduced. The OM28 was introduced in 1929 with 11 total models, and the late bloomer of the bunch, the D35, was introduced in 1965 with 207 models. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, guitar geeks across the world. This is another episode of Acoustic Tuesday in the books. Episode 10 is over. I want to wish you a happy Halloween, but first, I want to look into the crystal ball and see what the future holds for Acoustic Tuesday. So, what are we going to talk about next week? Well, I've got a list here, and I'm, I'm, i got to keep on track. So, we're going to look at a replica guitar that functions just like a time machine. A remedy for displaying your guitars in an elegant, safe fashion. And we're going to learn on the next episode of Acoustic Tuesday that staying up until 3.59 a.m. is actually really, really good for you. So from all of us here at Tony's Acoustic Challenge Studios, thank you so much for watching an episode of Acoustic Tuesday. Thank you for listening to an episode of Acoustic Tuesday. And just thank you for sharing your time with us. May you have the best guitar-infused week that you possibly can. And of course, we'll see you next week on Acoustic Tuesday, which airs on YouTube, Facebook, and soon in iTunes podcast at 10 a.m. Mountain Time every single Tuesday. In fact, I've got some further information about that podcast. I want you to mark your calendars. They're probably already marked actually. Uh, Thanksgiving Day this year is when the Acoustic Tuesday podcast will go live. You can download it and take the three of us with you on your travels and we can just share in the guitar geekiness uh, all the live long day and, and wherever you may be. So again from all of us thank you so much and we'll see you next week on Acoustic Tuesday. Cheers.